My only knowledge, my only knowledge before that of, 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 the, of American high schools was what I saw in the movies. When I was a kid in Ireland, I used to see these wonderful movies about American suburban life. And one of, there was a series called the Andy Hardy series, out that had Mickey Rooney. Uh, and everybody was bright and clean and white. Everybody was white. And uh, all, the, all, all the girls had these bosoms that were apocalyptic. And, and I just, uh, <clears throat> and I wanted one of them. Even when I was nine. And all the boys were named Chuck. Uh, and I wanted to be in one of those suburban schools in America, and I would teach all these blonde, blue-eyed kids, uh, and they're all, they're all, and they all had dazzling teeth. It, no, a, a cavity wouldn't dare approach them. And this is where I'd be, and I'm going on, and, and I'd wear a tweed. I'd be Irish, and, and I'd wear a tweed, and, and they're all this. This was, this was what I, this is what I had in mind. Uh, this was my dream in America, but not that I intended to become a teacher. I thought, uh, when I started to think about teaching, this would be my idea. I would go to some suburb. So, uh, my background, uh, as if, if, if you've read these books, uh, uh, Andrew's Ashes and Tiz, which are still available in all fine bookstores. <laughs> uh, if, if you've read these books, you know that I had what they call now a miserable childhood for which I thank God. Because uh, were it not for that miserable childhood, I probably wouldn't be here. Uh, so uh, I come to, I, I, I landed. When I came to America, where did I land? Albany. How did I land in Albany? I was on an Irish freighter called the Irish Oak. And it took, I think, nine days from Cork to New York, and then they wouldn't let us, for some reason, they were, it was a freighter, they had freight, like freight, is that what you call it, a cargo, freight. Anyway, they wouldn't let us land in New York City, they told us, go up river to, to Albany. So we, uh, we, we, we made our way up the river, uh, there were 12 or 13 passengers, and we had to stop at Poughkeepsie overnight because of the tide. And I had an adventure in Poughkeepsie that night. Which, uh, I th uh, which had to do with a guy coming out in a boat and calling to me. He, he saw the Irish flag, he was Irish, and he brought us ashore and we had a great night in Poughkeepsie. Uh, <laughs> a wild night in Poughkeepsie. <clears throat> so then uh, I found out later, somebody wrote an article in the Irish Times uh, a couple of years later saying, explaining why, why I went to show with two crew members and, and, and another passenger. At that time, they were smuggling in Irish sweepstakes tickets. That was the biggest lottery in the world at the time. And uh, these, these ships, this, the, the wireless officer, I think, was smuggling these, it, they were like lottery tickets, uh, completely illegal in America. And I was used as some kind of, what we call a front or something like that, uh, a decoy. But I didn't care because I had a good time anyway. So, so, we, so we, I got off at Albany and I had to get the train back down to New York. At that time, I had no, I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself in America. All I, I want, mainly I wanted to be comfortable. I knew you could do, you could be ambitious in America, but I just wanted to be comfortable. I wanted to, ha I wanted to get a nice job inside. I wanted, I didn't want to be wet anymore. <clears throat> it, 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 my, my limerick experience had made me so miserable. I wanted a nice job inside, in an insurance office maybe, down on Broad Street and, and up Wall Street or something. And then it, I'd meet a nice girl named Maureen. <laughs> and, <clears throat> a nice Irish girl that my mother would approve of. And, and uh, we'd go out for a while and I wouldn't touch her because she'd be Maureen, and the favorite word of Irish Catholic girls is no, at that, at that time. At that time, anyway, it's all changed. God to be 19 again. I'd be dead at 21. <clears throat> that was my dream, and then I'd marry Maureen, and we'd live out in the suburb of the, the borough of Queens, and We'd have three children, we'd go to mass every morning, and I'd work at the insurance company until I was 60 or 65.
then I'd kill myself. <laughs> Tedious. But at least I'd have a Catholic burial. <laughs> but that wasn't to be. What, ha what happened was that uh, um, I came and I, I, got, I had various jobs in New York, which were which, the jobs were dr pure drudgery. And I hated them because I, maybe I was vainglorious. Maybe I thought I was too good for these jobs. Uh, so uh, I was saved by the Chinese. You're wondering. Uh, uh, Mao Zedong uh, sent his attack Korea, and America got nervous and turned to me and drafted me. And, but they, they didn't send me to Korea, they sent me to Germany, where for two years I trained attack dogs, German Shepherd attack dogs, which was very good preparation for teaching. In, in <laughs> In my, in my later years. <laughs> Not that you can ever set the high school kids down. <laughs> the best thing about this was that I got the GI Bill when I got out of the army. And that, uh, although I had no high school education, I'd never gone put, set in the high school. I was finished school at 13, uh, primary school in Ireland. Uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I, when I got out of the army, I was working in the docks in New York and in the warehouses and the piers. And uh, one day, uh, we, we had unloaded a ship and, the, and the, the, the shop steward said we were finished, we could take off for the rest of the day. And I walked up Greenwich Avenue in New York and I went to the, uh, a bar called the White Horse, which was very famous for, uh, for, uh, uh, as a literary hangout. Dylan Thomas drank himself to death there. <clears throat> Maybe that was at the back of my mind. And I sat at the bar uh, having, uh, because I'd been in Germany, I was having a beer and a knockwurst. I was very cosmopolitan. <laughs> and I started doing some, something that was very dangerous for a young Irishman. I started thinking. <laughs> and, and I started wondering about the meaning of everything. And I got out very agitated and I walked away. I left a half a knockwurst and half a beer on the bar. And uh, I walked across Bleecker Street to, towards New York University. I don't know why I was walking that direction. I got over there and there was New York University. And I asked somebody where the admissions office was and they told me and I went in and I applied. And they thought it was very amusing when I didn't put down what high school that I, that I graduated from. I said I never did. And they were laughing and laughing and laughing. And the Dean of Admissions was just passing by. Her name was Florence Beeman. And she said, what's going on? And they told her that it was very funny that this young man is applying for NYU without a high school diploma. And then I got desperate. And I was, I, I was generally not assertive. I was, I was far, uh, fairly reticent and withdrawn most of the time. And I said, well, I, I'd, love to go to, I'd love to go to college. I, I read a lot of books. Oh, and uh, what books have you read? And I mentioned <clears throat> uh, Dostoevsky. <laughs> and, she, and she was impressed with that. And then I mentioned uh, 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 Dickens and the show. But then I clinched it. Joyce. <laughs> James, you read James Joyce? I said, yeah. Well, I was Irish, I suppose I thought. All, yeah, nobody in Ireland reads James Joyce. No, <laughs> nobody can.